Well, hello, my friends. Jason Levine here, Worldwide Product Evangelist for Adobe. And what can I say? It's been years, years and years that I've waited, waited for this moment, the moment when I'm able to tell you that Adobe Audition is coming to the Mac. That's right, it's actually coming. You're going to get a little technology preview of what's coming in the future, so let's take a look. Well, here we are, my friends, inside the interface of Adobe Audition on the Mac, and the first thing you're going to notice is it looks like it always did, right? It looks like Audition does on the PC. It looks like Cool Edit did, and the core competencies of Audition, right? It's strong editor, the foundation of this application, it's all there, but it's even better, it's even faster, it's even more precise, and we've got lots of hidden goodies. But just to show you some of the classic things, speed as an editor, right? It's extremely fast, the ability to zoom all the way down to sample level with a single wheel of the wheel mouse, right? To navigate the interface quickly, all of that's stuff exists, right? That's really, again, some of the core functionality of Audition that's still there. It's going to feel familiar, but it's just better and it's on the Mac. It's coming to the Mac. Again, you've got your um, panels here, like your playlist and your markers panel. You'll see we've also got the history panel, right? This is one of the things that people have been asking for for years. Undo history, now you're going to find that on the Mac. You've also got your frequency analysis. Let's play a little bit of this back. Oh, it's rolling? Yeah, we're rolling. And you can see that we've got, again, it feels very similar, looks very similar. You've got your eight hold positions, all color-coded, right? You can enable these, disable these very simply. You've also got a lot of cool features on the level meters here. These are things that you had before. The ability to show LED meters, right, in this kind of effect here. Or you can even disable the gradients if you like it a bit more old school. The key is these are things that you had, again, adjusting the, uh, the viewable range. This is stuff that you had in the previous versions of Audition. It's all the same, it's just better and faster, and it's coming to the Mac. Now one of the other really cool things that we did is that we've now enabled the, um, the process of loading files and allowing them to load in the background to allow you to continue working. So you can see I'm opening a series of MP3s here. If I scroll up, you can actually see these little indicators that they're loading, but watch this. As they're opening the files, I'm still playing. I'm playing back as it's opening materials. Now later in the second video, I'm gonna show you how this also applies to effects processing when we get to that section. But before we get there, let's talk about the um, spectral frequency display. Now again, you've got your classic button up here that will allow you to access your spectral frequency display, again, seeing frequency over time. But we've also got this very cool little portion bar down here that you can simply click and drag like so. So now you have the ability to see the waveform view and the spectral frequency display together. And again, you'll notice the speed of the application. As I zoom in now, the redraw on this, unbelievably fast. You still also got your vertical zoom capability. And again, look at how quick this is. This is, again, one of those core functions of Audition, the vertical zoom, simply by taking your mouse and just using the wheel. It's so fast, it's so efficient, it feels and functions the same, but it's even better. And of course, you still have access to all of those tools that you had in the last version of Audition, right? So if you're working in the spectral frequency display and you're trying to do, uh, you know, very small frequency specific modifications or attenuations, or you're fixing a, a dog bar, or a cell phone or removing little bits and pieces here and there. You can use things like the marquee tool, the lasso selection tool, the classic Photoshop paintbrush, and of course the spot healing brush. And again, these all are pretty self-explanatory. The key is that you can actually draw these freeform shapes like this. And you can see that you can readjust your selection here like this, okay? And if we wanted to attenuate that, we can use our heads-up display here. Let's drop it out, 70 dB, boom, done. Take it out. Again, you've got your marquee, you've got the paint brush here, so you can paint on your selection like this, and let's make this full screen. You've got controls for size and opacity, and you've also, of course, got your spot healing brush. So again, if you wanted to remove or tweak or attenuate or affect one particular frequency inside this file, you could do that, vroom, remove it, take it out, attenuate it, add some effects very, very quickly. Now let's hop over to the multi-track and show you some of the amazing things that we're doing in here. And again, it already, it looks and feels and functions just like the audition you always knew. Let's go ahead and play back and showcase again some of the fast capabilities of the multi-track here. We can go ahead and add some delay on this little whistle track here. Add some canyon echoes. We can solo this. Let's go ahead and close it. Let's go ahead and add some reverb on here. So we can put some reverb on there. I go to my studio reverb and add a nice big reverberant room. Here we go. Nice and echoey. Right, bring everything back in. Playback never stops. You'll also notice that we've got the frequency analysis panel here. Very cool, right? You didn't have that before. Now we do. But one of the coolest things that we've got in here, friends, let's go up to multi-track. Check it out. That's right. 
5.1 audio tracks, 5. bus tracks, true multi-channel mixing inside the mixer. You even have the ability, of course, to create multi-track sessions with a proper 5.1 master. But it gets even better than that because, again, you have all these capabilities when working with multi-channel files inside the multi-track here. So what I'm going to do is let's go ahead and pull up. I've got a file here that I created. Let's go ahead and add this. So we're going to go multi-track, track, track add a new 5.1 audio track. Here we go. Let's drag it in. Now it's going to need to convert this. All right. Click OK because this happens to be 44.1. Now look, it's opening. It's still processing. Let's wind back and let's play. The session keeps playing even while the file is in there. And again, we can solo this. Let's go ahead and play a bit of it. Got some nice multi-channel metering here. Very, very cool, but it gets even better. Let's bounce over to the waveform view because now you have true 5.1 editing capability. So you can actually edit these multi-channel files. You can either make global changes like adding global fades to the beginning and the ends like this, but it gets even better. What if we just wanted to affect something like the LFE channel? We wanted to um, bring up the volume of the LFE or apply an effect or a compressor to just the LFE. Well, I can disable all of the other channels, only select LFE, go ahead here, Let's just make a little volume change like that, boom, and it only applies to that single channel. True multi-channel editing inside the Audition Editor on the Mac. Friends, there's so much more, but you're just going to have to go to the next video to find out.